Welcome back to the Real Life Moms podcast. It is time to take a break from all your to-dos and take time to focus on you. I'm Lisa Foster, your host, and today I have a fellow mom with me, Anat Perry. She is an inner child expert and a somatic healer. And today we're discussing the five personality patterns and how they show up in our lives. So hi, Anat. Thank you for coming on our show today. Yeah, thank you, Lisa. Great to be with you. I'm excited to talk about this. Personality patterns and types really intrigue me because I think they do affect how we show up and also the people around us, how we should be like reacting to, to them. So mm-hmm. I would love to hear what your thoughts are. Like what, what do you consider is a personality pattern and why are they so important? So to give credit where credit is deserved, this isn't something that I created. There's a great book by Dr. Stephen Kessler called The Five Personality Patterns. And so if you want to deep dive into it, get his book. It's more something that I have been studying and actually had a call with him years ago and use with my clients and with my students in my certification program and is such a huge part of knowing how to support someone through their trauma or towards their healing or move through any difficult situation. I've come to realize that you cannot coach each person the same way. You can have great modalities and tools, but if you don't know what their primary and secondary personality patterns are, then they might not feel safe enough to actually heal, to move through what they need to heal. So in the past four years that I've been working with the five personality patterns, it's a game changer professionally. And I'd say it's a game changer for anyone professionally, whether you're dealing with a boss or coworkers or even personally from your kids to your partner to your in-laws. It just, when you know and understand this stuff, oh my God, what a difference it makes. Wow. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm excited about this and yes, I deal with clients as, as well. And yes, I hear you when a person can feel safe, there's a lot more healing that can happen, right? So I'm excited to learn this a little bit. So would you mind taking us through some of these? There are five of them, is that right? But they Uh, as five? Yes, there's there's five and there's one that has kind of like a secondary, but yes. So first off, I'll say that these patterns were formed out of a developmental need that was not met. And when that developmental need was not met, this strategy, you can call it, got formed because we always look to survive, to feel safe. And how and when it shows up now in your life is in overwhelm. When you're in a state of overwhelm in any way, whether it's a you're in a fight, a disagreement, or you're just super stressed out, is most likely when it shows up. Mm. And there's beautiful gifts to all of them. And how how can you get to accessing the, more of the gifts as opposed to the the distortion of it? Is learning how to cultivate safety, learning how to feel safe within yourself, so that you don't need to use the pattern in order for your nervous system to feel safe, you feel safe. And so therefore you're tapping into a lot of the beautiful gifts of it. So, so the first pattern got formed as a developmental need to feel safe to just come into this world. And so if mom had rough time in her third trimester, or if labor was really challenging, anything like that, a lot of times, or there was some kind of separation between mom and baby for the first few days or week, or mom just wasn't able to really be there to usher you into this world in the safest way, then the leaving pattern gets formed. And it's basically not feeling safe to occupy your body, to be in this world, that it feels safer to not be in this world, to be in your, either in your imagination or really out there, you know, connecting with, you know, guides and spirits and all that and not dissociating a lot from the body. And so it can look like some of the gifts of it, I should say, it can look like someone that's really, really creative Mm -hmm. writers, you know, performers, because they're, 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 they're channeling a lot of that beautiful stuff. 
but, a, but what could be challenging about it is that our systems, our nervous systems are very sensitive, very frail. And so we don't do well with big energy. Anything mm-hmm. that feels intense, pulls us out of our ability to be in our body and stay there. So that's the leaving pattern. We tend to talk really fast because again, we don't need to be in our body. We're just in our head. We're all the way up here. <laughs> it actually even forms your body type. It could be like, a, like you're, you, it tends to be more, more frail, more skinny, more slim, like yoga body. So yeah. It's really fascinating how the energy forms that. The the second pattern is the merging pattern. And this one got formed out of a developmental need for nurturance. If you did not get the nurturance that you needed, whether that was literally getting enough of, of mom's breast milk, getting enough food. This is from like three months all the way to like three years old. If you didn't get that or emotionally mom wasn't there to nurture you or even physically not there then this distortion of there isn't enough mm-hmm. and so it feels like this i'm not enough there isn't enough and the only way for me to feel safe is to get what i need and so it becomes this <clears throat> i need to merge with other people it's the tendency to be like needy clingy and to feel this hollowness, this emptiness inside. And this is my primary pattern. And I know what it feels like because for years, I felt like this black hole in my chest that could never be filled as much as I was needy from others and getting from others. It was just never enough. It can never be filled. And there was a lot of anxiety and a lot of inability to be with myself and always needing someone to save me and always needing someone to process things with me and to dump my, you know, my, my, my stories on or my sadness or anything like that. So that's one part of it. There's also like a secondary part to the merging pattern, which is the merging compensated, which is came from the same distortion of I'm not enough, but how you get safety, how you get it met is I'm only enough when I give to others. Hmm. So you want to think of it like the merging is like the damsel in distress. The merging compensated is the savior, but both of them feel not enough. One just fully, you know, doesn't know how to give to themselves and gets it from others. The other one just abandons themselves and gets fulfilled by others. So it's, it's a giving, but a giving from empty. Mm-hmm. The gift of this pattern is we're the healer. Mm-hmm. A lot of times mm-hmm. we're the lover. We have, when we learn, which I have how to fill that void, how to nurture ourselves, how to give ourselves what we always needed and never learned how to. And we fill that gap because I never feel that black hole anymore. Uh Uh-uh. We have so much capacity to give. We have so much compassion, so much love, though. A A lot of us in the healing arts tend to run one of these patterns. So can I ask you, like, I know we're going to go on to the other ones, but what was it for you that helped you fill, I guess, that black hole? Because that seems really... Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is a lot of what I work on with my clients. It's like, once you recognize, oh, this is their primary pattern, it's like, first and foremost, even if they came to me to work on their relationship or, or their career, it's like, we have to get you out of this pattern because this pattern will runs your life safety right we have to learn safety and what feels safe and learning how to work with the nervous system to feel safe to feel our feelings to nurture ourselves so specifically like for the merging pattern it is to learn how to nurture yourself instead of running to someone else when you feel panicked instead of falling into hopelessness always instead when you feel that hopelessness you feel it and you hold yourself through it you learn how to mother yourself how to nurture yourself how to love yourself so that is specific to that one even though it may seem universal to all the others 
to everybody. Doesn't everybody need to learn how to do that? Yeah, but specifically for this pattern, like for the leaving pattern, it's just learning to literally occupy your body. And so the work that I do a lot with clients that that's their pattern is a lot of nervous system regulation, a lot of just creating safe, sensual touch. Like, can you give yourself a massage right now? Can you massage your arms or caress yourself or tickle yourself and just start to create sensation that feels safe so that you can start to feel safe to be in your body, helping them to slow down their breath. So a lot of nervous system regulation happens with them. Third pattern is the enduring pattern. And this one, the developmental need was to know that you have choice. And this happens around the age of three, four, when, you know, the child starts to realize, oh, I can do things on my own. Oh, <laughs> I'm not my mom. I'm not my dad. And if mom and dad were really strict and it had to be their way, or if they, here's a big one, if they shamed you. In any way, if there's any shame, then we learn it's not safe for me to speak up or to do what I want to do. So instead, I'm just going to hunker down and just take it because I don't want to lose mom and dad's love. And so they learn to just stuff down their feelings, stuff down their emotions, and just simply endure it. It forms the body type too. A lot of times they'll be more heavy set. If it's just either their whole, they'll be stockier. There'll just be some denseness to that, especially if it's their primary pattern. And so how do you help them heal and move through that? They need to learn that, A, they have choice. So when I work with a client like this, I never tell them anything. I put it in front of them. I give them choice. I ask them a lot of questions. I let them start to feel that they can choose and that there's no judgment because if they sense any bit of shame they're going to crawl back into that into that clam right that cocoon mm -hmm. and for them a lot of movement because they're used to sitting and holding it all so it's not like oh what are you feeling where are you feeling it it's like let's move with that feeling let's dance with that feeling let's create a lot of movement let's start to move it up very common for them in my method of moving energy of feeling feelings for them to get to a place where they feel nauseous. I feel mm -hmm. nauseous. I'm like, of course, because you've been stuffing it down <laughs> and now it, it, it's knocking to come up and I have them be nauseous. I have them actually act out, throwing up, like, <laughs> like marry that energy. Be mm -hmm. nauseous. They end up moving through it and unlocking whatever was underneath that. So a lot of permission to feel what is there and to move through what's there. That's kind of beautiful, actually, just kind of getting it. I mean, not beautiful to throw it up, but but getting it out almost like and, and it's never and I'll say this, they don't throw up. <laughs> it's, <laughs> yes. it's energy it yeah, is energy, just yes. energy but it's so amazing how common it is it's every time every client that I have that runs the enduring pattern at some point as we're moving through feeling feelings will say oh I I feel nauseous and I'm like perfect we got the big one here <laughs> that you've been stuffing down and you know my work is very much about learning how to actually Feel your feelings because most of us are not feeling our feelings. Mm -hmm. We are intellectualizing our feelings. We're judging it. We're, if we're wanting to fix it, change it, stuffing it down, numbing it, avoiding it. Most people don't know how to actually feel their feelings. And that is a huge part of what it is that I teach. The next one is the, the aggressive pattern. And this one mm -hmm. got formed, you know, around the age four or five years old when the child felt in some way some level of abandonment mm -hmm. whether it was you know just mom and dad not being there or yelling at them fighting with them somewhere where it's like wow you're not on my side you're not with me you're abandoning me it's me against the world I'm all alone so their mm -hmm. biggest fear 
is to be alone. Just like the biggest fear of the enduring pattern is to ever experience shame again. So they don't want it. They'll just stuff anything down, right? The merging pattern is, is to, you know, fall into like hopelessness. Anytime they feel hopeless, helpless, it's like, oh, I need saving. So for the, and for the aggressive pattern, it's, it's the fear of being let down, experiencing being alone, experiencing that abandonment. And so it can look like, I'll show you, like, I'll fight back. And it's, you know, that level of aggression, or it's, I need to be in control because I need to make sure that like things go my way. And, you know. So we know a lot of what the aggressive looks like otherwise. And, you know, what the aggressive pattern needs to heal is to learn to trust. It's to learn, it's to heal that level of inability to trust others. It requires a practitioner that is very skilled. You need, you need to have authority because they're testing you. Can I even mm -hmm. trust you? Mm -hmm. And so yeah, learning to feel safe, to trust, learning to feel safe, to trust the universe, to let go of that, of, of the need to control everything. So that's a little snippet. M my, my work is about understanding that everything is learned and you learned it by the age of seven and it was modeled to you and you learned by what you saw, heard or felt energetically from mainly your role models, mom mm -hmm. and dad. But if you learned it, you can unlearn it. And you're like, how do I heal my own inner child? It's acknowledgement and validation. Like we need to learn to acknowledge and validate what is showing up, what is arising as what is arising. There's nothing to fix. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to do. There's nothing wrong. There's just, can you acknowledge and validate? Like just imagine if they didn't try and fix it or make it wrong. When you said, you know, I'm feeling, I'm, I'm feeling annoyed or I'm feeling sad. And instead of like, what's wrong, how do I fix this? It's just yeah. acknowledging and validating that. Yes, I do feel that. Mm -hmm. And where do I feel it in my body? And let me name the sensations that are there around that. And then Learning how to feel it is like imagining that you are in the ocean of your emotion. Mm -hmm. And if you've ever been on, you know, in the ocean, like the Pacific Ocean, <laughs> especially, there's waves. So yeah. you want to think of your emotions as waves. And if you're in the ocean of your emotion and a wave of emotion comes and you just stand there, you're going to get smacked down. You need to learn how to be with the emotion. You need to learn how to ride the wave. And, you know, Harvard did a study that you could move through any emotion in 90 seconds. The reason that we don't is because we're not actually feeling the emotion. We don't know how, like I said, we're fixing it, we're judging it, we're intellectualizing it, we're stuffing it down. But when you do, it does move through you in 90 seconds. So how do you do that? Well, you work with your nervous system because your nervous system is always working for you, but you're not always with you. It's always listening for safety, threat. And when it senses safety, it metabolizes it. It processes whatever is there and it discharges it, right? Like a dog comes towards you and you're like, oh no, am I scared of this dog? Oh no, this dog's safe. Oh, okay. And suddenly you feel like you get hot and then you sweat it out and you're good. But you know, a big scary dog comes and I say dogs because that's my like I, <laughs> yes. little dogs. I'm like, as long as you don't jump on me, I'm cool, but I still get really sweaty. Big dogs, I'm like, ah, and I just want to like run the other way. But yeah, when it senses threat, it protects you. It puts you into fight, flight, freeze, or please. Like you'll definitely see me running from the dog. It puts us in this protective bubble. And so there's this feeling that we're saying isn't safe. And so we're not feeling it. We're actually protected by it. And we're stuck sometimes in these heightened states, whether it's pleasing or, or appeasing or running. Like people that say to me, I'm anxious. I feel anxious. I'm like, what are you running from? Anxiety is not the feeling. It's a running from a feeling. What are you running from? And if you're very controlling, having to control everything, that is the fight. And I'm like, 
What are you trying to control instead of allowing yourself to be there? So this is what happens when we don't work with our nervous system. We get smacked by the waves over and over again. And here we are stuck in a heightened state. If you can so learn to cultivate safety in your system. And I have a free guided meditation on this, on how to work with the nervous system and really learn how to re- self-regulate and feel good in our body. Then already just working with your breath in that way you're going to start to feel safer with whatever emotion is there. And then from there, when an emotion comes up for you, you ask yourself, where am I feeling this? And if you can name it in sensations, like it's in my chest and it's the size of an orange and it's heavy and it's hot and it's tight. What you're doing is you're speaking the language of the nervous system. Sensations are the language of the nervous system. It's neutral. You're not saying it's good or bad. It just is sensation. And right there, you're speaking to the nervous system. So you're starting to work with the nervous system and saying, hey, let's walk through this door. Let's get on this surfboard. Let's ride this wave. Then what it looks like to feel the feeling from there is to get accurate with naming what it is that you're feeling. Is it sad? Is it disheartened? Is it hopeless? Like how accurate can you get with that? And then imagine that you are an actor on stage and it's a one woman, one man show and you can't speak, but you have to act out. I am disheartened or I am hopeless, whatever that feeling is. In order to do that for the audience to get, oh, she's disheartened, you would have to use your whole body. You would actually have to be fully self-expressed. You would have to allow yourself to fully feel that feeling. And so by doing that, you're giving data to your nervous system. You'd have to use your body language, your facial expression, some sounds, like what does it sound like when you feel disheartened? What is the facial expression? What's the body language? And so suddenly we are feeling the feeling with more of our whole beingness. And we're giving so much data to our nervous system for it to learn this emotion, to learn this energy so it can digest it, metabolize it, and discharge it. And this is what it is to feel a feeling. And so what I do with my clients is I have them identify the sensation and the emotion. And I say, okay, I'm setting a timer, 90 seconds, go, act it out. and Every time within 90 seconds, that wave has passed most of the time. And then they either land at shore, or I like to call it the land of possibility. Mm -hmm. Like suddenly they feel possible again, hopeful again, or another wave comes up. There's another layer. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that is what happens, right? There's layers to it. We pop the, the lid off and We feel nauseous, but now we feel sad. And underneath that, there's anger. And underneath that, there's grief. And so learning to feel our feelings in that way, giving ourselves permission to take up space, to be center stage, to be the star. Let it be the star so that your nervous system can learn this energy. It's not that you're never going to feel that type of feeling again. It's that now you go from whoa, it's so uncomfortable every time that I feel sadness or believe it or not, for some people, joy and love feels uncomfortable to now it's programmed in there. And next time you have a thought or something triggers that emotion for you, your nervous system knows what to do with it and knows how to work with it. And so what you're doing is you're building your capacity to handle more instead of what we see all the time is we're in, we're stuck in survival in our little box. I don't want to ever feel this again. How do I not experience that again? And we become weak as a society. And it sounds like by, can I say almost like training your nervous system? It's yes. your, when you get hit by these waves or yeah. you should be riding them, but when you get hit by the waves, it's like your body like almost naturally knows how to surf on them. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And you could see that. I mean, think about 
whatever emotions you have no problem with. <laughs> and for some people, if you grew up in a household of chaos and you walk into a home where everybody's yelling, you're like, cool, no big deal. But if you didn't grow up in a household of chaos and you go over to your partner, to your in-laws and everyone's yelling, you're just like, oh my God, this is too much for my nervous system. It's because for one person, it was trained. It's already programmed what to do with it and how to discharge it. And the other person, it isn't. So we get to expand our nervous system's capacity to handle the full range, to handle more. Big waves, small waves, it'll know what to do. Nice. Yeah, yeah I love that. And I don't think I want to train my nervous system to want to be in a household <laughs> chaotic and yelling though do I or no, do I but, maybe I do well just so, to know how to handle it so this is a great question and especially for those that run the leaving pattern that oh my god it's too much I, I can't be with big energy and that was me that's my secondary pattern and you know your secondary pops in when your primary doesn't work think of it like your two your two bodyguards and if the first bodyguard like gets taken down, the second one comes up. So if you're in a situation where it doesn't work to come to merge and come back to love, for example, then the second one kicks in for me. And so like with my partner, he would, his patterns are different. So he'd get loud and I'd leave the room and he'd say, where are you going? I'm like, it's too much. I can't. And so to answer your question. For those of us that run the leaving pattern and something like being with anger, whether it's other people's big energy or our own, it is very important to learn to cultivate and be with big energy. Not so that you can get in the ring and fight, but so that you don't have to feel that you can't be in the fight. I have capacity now to access my, you know, my fire energy without burning myself down or burning the village down. So there's a healthy way to cultivate something like that. And it could also look like boundaries, right? It, it, knowing you walk into a home where there's a lot of chaos, it's like, okay, what is my boundary around this? And then what I'm hearing is, I know there's one more that we left out. So we'll get yeah. back to that because I know people are hanging on going, well, what was the fifth one? Right? <laughs> However, my question, because you were talking about, you know, your partner there, like if you have different patterns in the household mm -hmm. that maybe mm -hmm. are different waves for each other, how do we handle that? Ooh, wow. I don't know if I could cover that in, <laughs> in two minutes. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, 90 seconds, yeah. right? Just 90 so seconds. <laughs> common. Like my, my partner and I have opposite ones, right? His is, oh, oh here comes the fifth one. Rigid pattern. Okay, His there. is rigid and a little bit of aggressive, but I say more enduring and mine is merging and leaving. So we're opposites in that. And I think the gift and beauty in that is we get to teach each other like he's learned patience and more compassion for me. Like we get to teach each other the gifts of it. I've learned more like structure and organization and finding my, mm. my voice and my power from him. And, you know, he brings groundedness to me. I bring lightness and flexibility to him. So I think it's really beautiful to have the opposites. And also in moments where, I remember we just landed in Greece for our wedding. We were getting married in Greece and it was a stressful flight to say the least. And so we get in the car rental and he's like, he was really obviously overwhelmed. So all his patterns were kicking in and he's like, you could go sleep with your parents tonight. Cause my parents flew in that night too. And if I didn't know his patterns, I would have been very upset in that moment. And instead I was like, okay, we just had a hell of a 15 hour flight. We are tired. We are hungry. He's overwhelmed. That's all it is. He doesn't mean this. He needs space to cool off. Good thing he's dropping you off at the hair salon for your <laughs> hair trial. And that's it. And I didn't take it personal. So understanding this stuff, mm. oh, it's going to save you so much from taking things personal. You're going to understand the person. You're going to understand how to support them also in feeling safe in what they need. There's a whole lot that you can learn from the book. And then I think specifically, if you are looking to know how to work with clients as a practitioner, I have a free guide 
that I created from all my years. This isn't in Stephen Kessler's book. This is more specific to how to support, you know, your clients and work with your clients through stuff. So I have that free guide available on my website. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. So it sounds like that fifth one was the rigid. So thank you for putting that in there. I feel like I might be part of that, that one too. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Rigid pattern. It gets formed. That one is like age five to seven, which I think as parents, we think by then like, well, the kid could tie his own shoes and shower and eat and brush his own teeth. So like he should get everything right. And we tend to become parents that reward our kids for everything they do right. And so they they form this belief of like, I am my accomplishments. And or if you have parents that were rigid themselves and there's a right way and a wrong way. So you feel that you have to perform, you have to get things right. Otherwise, you would lose their love. So mm-hmm. you become this person. Again, the distortion, the belief is I am my accomplishments and there's a right way and a wrong way. So you, it could look like being very hard on yourself, very hard on others and yeah, stuck in this rigid box. And then of course, there's also a lot of beautiful, beautiful gifts to, to the rigid pattern, to all the patterns. So there's no bad pattern. There's just the one you got and it's never going to change you just like, you can't get rid of it. You just get to move more into the gifts of it. And for those of you that are like, I could see myself in all five. So I'm yeah. really confused. Pay attention to what shows up when you're overwhelmed, mm-hmm. when you're stressed, when you're in a fight, right? Because those are your survival strategies. The others could just be that they were your parents' survival strategies. And that you learned it as a behavior. So for you, you can access it and behave like it, but it's not necessarily something that you do when your system feels overwhelmed, when you don't feel safe. So that's the distinction there. Yeah, that's a big one. Because I was thinking that as you were going through, I'm like, oh, I can see myself there. And then, but no, in the overwhelmed, I am rigid. I go back to like, yeah. okay, we need to plan this out. This is what we're doing. Do, 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 do. And there yeah. we go. Like, couldn't be more rigid <laughs> just to get me my, out of it. <laughs> my sister-in-law, because I've, you know, seen her and my brother get into a fight and she'll start cleaning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're literally big and ugly. She's like cleaning because she's looking to create order yes because her system's looking for something like order feels safe I understand your sister I get it (laughs) now here's something because okay we have lots of parents listening right and we're all like shit what did I do to my kid right (laughs) what would you say to parents out there that are listening going oh gosh these these patterns and yes I'm uh for myself and I'm gonna heal myself and things like that but like feeling maybe a little guilty about (laughs) what maybe they put into their child well, feel the guilt, but release the guilt because <laughs> ride you know, the wave, <laughs> ride the wave. And if your kids are adults, they're still looking at you as a role model of what's possible for them. So the biggest, best thing that you can do is to heal yourself, to learn to come out of your, the distortions of your patterns and be more in the gifts to have a more regulated nervous system and and then therefore if you're the one that is evolved in that higher state of consciousness so to speak your job is to have more space and compassion to meet them where they're at not to fix them or judge them but to see it just like I see it in my husband and I'm like okay cool I see that and I know like learning what I know that he needs right now to come out of it and if we regulate our nervous system that in and itself already supports them in co-regulating with us and coming out of it but yes they they learn how to feel safe in their body they're they're gonna they're gonna free themselves from the distortions they'll be more in the gifts and you did a beautiful job (laughs) I love that so tell the listeners where they can find you and some of those amazing things you've offered yeah so all the freebies are on my website trainingcampforthesoul.com and I hang out on Instagram If you follow me on there, I message every new follower because I always like to get to know the human behind the follower because I have a lot of resources, free resources, my own, 
other people and, you know, just want to support people with whatever it is that they need. So feel free to follow me there or check out any of my offerings and free offerings on my website. Well, thank you so much for sharing all these personality patterns and just your own experience with them, as well as all your free offers to us. We really appreciate that. And it's been so nice to have you on the show. Thank you, Lisa, for having me. Thank you so much for joining us today for this episode. I hope you were able to identify your personality pattern. And if you want to learn about Anat and all her amazing resources, including those free guides that she was talking about on our show, just click on the link in the show notes. And until next week, keep riding those waves and taking care of yourself because you matter.